Certain humdrum cars get thrown into popular culture by being used in memorable items with the trio. The Opel Cadet, Suzuki Liana, and especially the Dacia Sandero. But none of them can quite compete with a little car from the Isle of Man. I'm buzzing for today's filming because we're driving a Peel P50. <laughs> There's one question that I've always wanted to answer though. Was Jeremy Clarkson right about this car? He said that it was the future, and yes, it'll be fine at all the inner city and shopping mall stuff, but what about outside of that? Well, I've brought it here to somewhere completely inappropriate, a racetrack, to do something that as far as I'm aware, no one has ever done before, a proper performance test of a P50. Okay, let's go for a start up choke up, key to the right, let's get my throttle foot ready, nope, there she is. Okay, in first. And we're off. Plenty revs. And we're off. The first thing you'll notice is a P50 is very loud. Just about to light him here. It's a 72 cc Honda engine, single cylinder. But at the end of the day, it's still a single cylinder motorbike engine. And that means it has a motorbike gearbox as well. Now, it's sequential, and that's why you just have to go up the gears and back down them. And it's done by this cone chip. My main problem with it is the clutch. It seems to be on or off. Which means, like that, on the way up and on the way down, the back wheel doesn't like how violent the shift is. Down to third. Yeah. You have to be ready on the steering because that back wheel does not enjoy it and kicks. And then there's the one thing that never gets talked about with the new B50 in terms of driving. And that is the engine placement. That little Honda engine, or the original, the German-made DKW engine, is by my right hip here. And that means when you're going around right-hand bends and the G-force is going that way, it's cool. The engine opposes that G-force and you stay relatively stable. It's the left-hand turns that you need to be very careful with. Because the engine is going with the G-force and it is super easy to pop a wheel. I'm literally doing that turn at 10, 15 miles an hour. And if you're not careful, you will roll the car. And that's not good because these things, because of Jeremy's piece on top here, are quite valuable now. So this car is worth about 25 grand and that's because it's a recreation built by P50 cars on the outskirts of London. But the originals, the 60s cars, like what Jeremy drove, they're worth more than a hundred grand now. For a single cylinder, five horsepower car, over a hundred thousand pounds. 
absolutely crazy. It just shows how much influence that man has. My gear knobs come off. Please go back on. Please go back on. Yeah, there she goes. Jesus, that was scary. Okay, we're back in the game. Woohoo! One of the main things that holds back this car is the size of its wheels. I've not measured them, but I reckon they must be no more than seven inch wheels. And then attached to those are what I would class as garden center tires. They look like they belong on a trailer being pulled by a ride along lawnmower. They look like they should be transporting logs, not driving a car. It's drum bakes all around. They're not up to much. And you can find that with the dodgy gearbox. I say that dodgy clutch. You're all over the place on corner entry. And then you can't turn in that aggressively because you'll roll. And then when you finally got it straight, you've got that racket of a single cylinder engine. <laughs> what a crazy machine. Who came up with this? <laughs> this car does not belong here, but my god is it fun. The straight Atlanta has a slight uphill to it. Let's see what she'll do. At 35, boot flat to the floor. Third gear takes you to about 38, into the floor. There's 40. 41. I need to stop breaking. <laughs> there you go. So that's what a P50 is like on track, but to bring things back to reality, I wonder what one of these is actually like to own. Well, the good thing is the owner's in the canteen, so let's go for a tango and some Maltesers and have a chat. F my knees. But before some snacks and a chat, I need to talk to you about our sponsor who made this shoot possible. I realise how lucky a position I'm in. I can basically come up with an idea, pick a car for it, and then within certain boundaries, film it for you guys. And in terms of coming up with those ideas, within the YouTube space, we all kind of inspire each other's channels. I also specifically like to hark back to the old Top Gear days fairly often, but I also get a lot of inspiration by reading magazines. And Readly, today's sponsor, is a top place to do exactly that. A lot of the big famous specials that the trio did actually originated from the car magazines of the 1990s. So I always like to keep up to date with what's happening in that area of car media, just in case something pops up. What's great about Readly is that every car magazine I could ever want to read is right here, the goat of which is Evo Magazine. They've always had the best writers and cover everything from straight up performance car reviews to older future classic stuff, and then just really nice eloquent stories that happen to feature performance cars. And a great example of inspiration came fairly recently. We're coming up with ideas for a content trip to France. So immediately I'm in my head trying to think up what would be the perfect car to kick about France in. And then I'm flicking through Evo Magazine on Readly and suddenly I come up against an article about the history of the Renault Clio V6. TWR engineering, a massive engine in a tiny car. That has to be the car for the trip sorted. Readly is a digital magazine subscription service that gives users unlimited access to over 5,000 national or international titles for tablet or smartphone. It's basically Spotify for magazines and newspapers. Whatever you're interested in, Readly will have a title for it. For example, outside of cars, I'm really into just miniature things. Airfix kits, model railways, wargaming, I love it all. And when looking in the hobbies and collecting section on Readly, I'm absolutely swimming in model measure Smiths, little Highlander soldiers, all the good stuff. 
If you're into something, it's probably somewhere on this platform. And there's also cool features like offline reading and a search function so that you can find older editions. It's super easy to get started. Just sign up for our Readly account at readly.com, download the app, have a look at the publications that take your fancy, and then just get reading. You will get two months of Readly completely for free, and then after that, it's £9.99 a month, and you can cancel at any time. So click the link in the description below and take advantage of our exclusive deal, and maybe reading your favourite magazines will help your creativity too. Alex, you're the owner of the P50, and thank you so much for allowing us to use it today. You're welcome. Why did you buy that car and how long have you had it? Um, I've had the car about three years. Okay. The reason I bought it was just to use it as a car. So right. most people would buy one to have as part of their collection if they've got either they're into micro cars or weird cars or sometimes you get people with really high-end muscle cars and they have it there as a gimmick, you know, the world's smallest car. But I generally bought it because I wanted to know what it was like to use one as an everyday driver. So. I used to go to work in it, I used to go to the shops and just drive about in it, among other classic cars that I've had, but by a long shot that one has always got the most attention. Well that is my next question, what is it like to own and run a P50? Well the, the thing is, the advantage of them is things like, um, you know, easy to park, very good on fuel and stuff, but you can't leave it anywhere unattended, because it gets so much attention wherever it goes, and no matter where it goes. Even people that aren't interested in cars, they see that, they come over, they ask questions, they want to get photographs, and I don't know if it's because the car's so unusual, they think, it's fine, I can sit on it or pick it up and stuff. So, so people genuinely go up and get oh, the handle yeah, yeah. and walk away with if it. If I stuff. walk away and people don't realise I'm the owner and they think, oh, he's not around, they start doing stuff with wow. the car. And is that, do you think <laughs> that's mostly Clarkson? Or do you think there is just a general know-how of the P50? I think straight down the middle, there's a 50-50 thing. One is, is that the Clarkson car? Sure. The other half is what is that, you know, and that they see it and it's so tiny, and of course kids love it and things, and that's why I, you know, I don't really get fussed because if a kid sees it and they think it's really funny, I kind of encourage that because when I was a kid, I'd have loved to have been able to jump in a car like that and just, you know, pose for the camera or whatever. Yeah, you, know? yeah. you just don't pickle down to the shops in it. You've been on one hell of a journey in that car, all for children in need. So tell us yeah. about the journey you've been on with it. Well, it, it was funny because. Because I would drive it just as an everyday car, I always wanted to drive it further and further afield because I loved seeing people's reaction to it. And I just had this yeah. idea in my head, what's the biggest challenge I can do in it within the UK? And I thought, well, drive the length of the entire country. So I had the idea for a while, and when circumstances changed that I actually had the opportunity to go ahead and do it, I just did, and I didn't really plan it very much. It was kind of, people were like, well, what is your exact route, and where are you going to be at this time on this day? And I said, well, what I'm going to do is, when I leave Scotland, I'm going to head south, <laughs> and when I get to the sea, I'll turn right, <laughs> and I'll end up in Cornwall. <laughs> Amazing. So, I mean, you will have driven that thing on full 70 mile an hour motorways, and it only does 40 odd. So what is that like? Lorries, vans, yeah, everything? Yeah, it's terrifying. One of the weather as well? Yeah, the weather's a big factor. It's freezing cold in that car, because yeah. I did it in November and into December, because it took three weeks. But I remember on the A9, uh, it's kind of dual carriageway and things, but the A9, it, you go, this is in the highlands of Scotland, yeah. it would go from twin dual carriageway to single. Yep. So when it got to single, there was miles and miles of traffic, and there and was nowhere for me. Cameras, yeah. There, well. oh. <laughs> there was nowhere to pull over. So when, when people, when it went back to dual, they were like, fuff, fuff, fuff. <laughs> and you know, the car's shaking around, and even the big lorries, like the really big kind of uh, articulated lorries, they'd fly past, and they suck you in. So oh, you, the, you, the, you feel the car, you have to counter steer and it's going like this and it's like spraying you with water because it was raining all the time. How did you survive? <laughs> It I don't know, like I don't know. We thought accident waiting to happen. Yeah, there were some hairy moments. And I remember also, because you know the rear wheel is in the middle, because yep. it's three wheel drive, that's the drive wheel. And if the ground was muddy for any reason, what happens is when that wheel can't grip, it will try and spin the car around. So you're driving and you suddenly realise it's turning, so you counter steer, but because the car's like, what, that long? <laughs> Basically, when you counter steer, before you know it, you're the other way. So you're driving down the road like you're drunk, like, mm, like this. Ease off the throttle and then, okay, Have reset. Have you not had a crash? Have you had a crash? No. Wow. <laughs> I've never crashed it. I, d I don't know how I haven't 
crashed it. It's probably not a very safe car to drive, actually. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's one hell of an adventure. Mm. What's your future plans for the car? Well, people always ask, well, what's next? And they're like, around the world in a Peel 50? I was like, well, I'd definitely be up for that. What I'd really like to do is drive coast to coast USA in a car that's made of fiberglass with no air conditioning or fans or anything. And also lorries can do the full speed limit in America, so they're coming past you quick. Yeah. So I might not survive, but I'd definitely give it a go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll the worst that can happen is I die, so. Yeah, we will absolutely support you with that. And what's your YouTube channel? Forward oh, yeah. to the past. Forward to the past, remember yeah. that, guys. And your full John O'Groat strip is on that. For That's right, so the series is called The UK in a Peel P50. Cool. So it documented the whole experience, which was incredible fun, and raised over 11 grand for children in need. Amazing, well, thank you so much for allowing us to use your car today, and I'll look after it the best I can. The P50 can't have it too easy today. So I have brought along a competitor car. I say car, it's actually a quadricycle and is well known for being one of the most awful things ever made. Apologies to anyone that immediately vomits or has explosive diarrhea from simply laying eyes on it. But please everyone, welcome to the Drive Tribe YouTube channel, the G-Wiz. With a whopping 17 horsepower produced by a 48 volt lead acid battery and a range of about 50 miles, the G-Wiz is just as disappointing to drive as it is to look at. So let's forget all that. The only thing to do is of course, a drag race. Here we go. G-Wiz versus P50. The drag race no one asked for. I don't want to win this. I think I might. into that thing. Oh, that G-Wiz electric acceleration is just the way. I'm not pulling away though, I can see him in my mirror. Well done. I tell you what, he might just be catching me. He's pretty even now. That's honestly not bad, considering it's 1960s tech. What's that? 35 miles an hour across the finish line. Wow. I am slightly frightened at how quickly the range on this has gone down. We don't have a specific number, but just judging by the gauge, on that one drag race, I've lost 25% power. Possibly the slowest drag race ever at this track prompted us to set some not so hot laps. With the G-Wiz coming in just under seven seconds faster than the P50. Today was just a bit of fun, experiencing a legendary car and that thing in an environment that we've never seen them in before. And I guess if we were to take one scientific fact from today, it's that even with less horsepower than a pencil sharpener, you are still better off with four wheels rather than three. Saying that, I know which one I'd go for.